Today we are going to have a look at the story of a witch that converted to Islam. This is actually very very interesting to come from such a background and then to convert to Islam. Let's hear her story. From casting spells in the dark to finding light in the Quran. What makes a witch leave behind everything she's ever known for Islam? This is Abby's story. The ex-witch who found her way to Islam. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Stick around. This story is about to get real. I was a polytheistic pagan. Um, well, really, I was a witch. <laughs> I was practicing witchcraft. I was a part of the occult. I had thousands of dollars worth of occult items that any occultist would, would dream to have. That line alone is enough to... Sh Wait a second. Was she like selling spells or something? <laughs> It's like interesting, isn't this like that with like Scientology and, and so, like there are some, it's actually funny, right? Like there was even like certain, like there are certain cults and stuff these days when if you even like enter them, for example, and you want to join, you have to pay a lot of money to even get in. Scientology is one example, right? But if you look at like black magic or fortune tellers, of course, if you go to a fortune teller and... Um, uh, hey, so and so, can you tell me your future? Um, yeah, but this is fifty bucks or something. No, seriously, they they make money with such uh, stuff like witchcraft and fortune telling and stuff. There are people that got like rich from that kind of stuff, right? And some people even sell uh, love magic and stuff in some Arabic speaking countries. Uh, I was told by a brother, and a person can go there and say, "Hey, I want to marry so and so, but this person doesn't like me. Can you uh, use magic so this person fall falls in love with me?" Audubillah. This is this is haramim Islam. Don't do this. This is forbidden. This is sinful. And that's also a form of shirk, so stay very very far from this. But I know there are some people that are that desperate that they do this, right? Yeah, may Allah guide those individuals. But that's crazy here. Occult items that any occultist would, would dream to have. That line alone is enough to shock a viewer. Yes. How did a witch find her way to Islam? The title is Now let's get something yeah. straight. <laughs> Witchcraft is no joke. Of course In not. Islam, it's, shirk. it's linked to black magic. And we all know it's one of the biggest evils we are warned against. Yes. But somehow... Abby found her way from that darkness to the light of Islam. In the wildest part, it all started on TikTok. And of all places where I found Islam, I found Islam on TikTok. Wow, Ramadan TikTok, mashallah. actually, <laughs> of all places. Yeah, you heard that right. I thought Abby YouTube. first stumbled upon Islam while scrolling through TikTok, wanting insane. to learn about Ramadan. One video turned into more, and soon enough, she couldn't ignore the pull of Islam, even though she tried. She tried to brush it off, but the more she learned, the harder it was to deny the truth. Uh, guys, I'm from a different generation. Uh, I'm a 90s kid, and when I accepted Islam, I was a new Muslim. Like, YouTube was a thing for Dawa, right? Like, everyone went on YouTube that was, like, starting to practice Islam or learn about it. And YouTube was the main online source of Dawa and a bit of Facebook. There were, like, some Facebook groups, right, where they share hadiths and Quran uh, ayahs and stuff, right? But, like, TikTok is such a big thing. And I wouldn't be surprised if even people uh, revert through Instagram these days, right? So it changed from YouTube and Facebook now to TikTok and Instagram, I guess. But then again, like, short videos have become such a thing. We live in, like, such a fast society. It's actually insane. Like, how many people use their phones to watch very short one-minute videos and stuff, right? Sometimes even 30 seconds videos only. It, it's insane. Like, the consummation is so short. But this is actually also a negative aspect because if you watch short videos and not full Islamic lectures you only learn little right so you reach more people with short videos right because everyone's busy but the depth of knowledge you can reach from short videos is not very very good like I I'm not like against Dawa on TikTok, like don't get me wrong, or against Instagram, like may Allah reward those brothers and sisters that manage to convince others with Allah's will to accept Islam, I mean, may Allah reward them, I mean, but I would recommend for people if they seek knowledge or learn about Islam, use platforms with more information where like longer videos, like YouTube for example, get on maybe Facebook pages where they are like in-depth Texts which you can read through, or also longer videos, right? 
But yeah, it's fascinating how things are changing over the years. And then, Islam for Dummies happened. Yep, that's the book that piqued her Clark. curiosity and got her diving deeper into the deen. That book led her straight to the Quran. Oh, she's a and German. And she spent all 30 days of Ramadan reading it. And guess what? With every page, her heart softened and her love for Islam and prayer kept growing. Before she knew it, Abby was ready to take the next big step. She decided to visit a mosque and the rest oh, and is then history. Shahada. But of course, no journey is without its struggles. Of course, that's right. But she had one question that was bugging her and that's the right. Imam answered that question in a practical way. But the one question that I had that was bothering me, that was stuck with me, was how do I know that it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is the only one? And they didn't, they didn't give me any long list of what I can do. They gave me this task to do, which was to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and myself, to speak to him as if I'm a friend, to connect with him to give, give him all of my troubles, all of my happiness, and I'll find him. Like a chosen few, oh. she found her way to Islam despite being a polytheist. To so her fitra reacted to it, right? When, when she was told by this imam, like, try to connect with Allah, try to do this and that. So, so her fitra, like her inner feeling, made her realize there is a creator, basically, right? That's what I'm getting from what she explained, right? I mean, yeah, there are such individuals that go by logic and by fitra, right? And there are other individuals, like I heard crazy revert stories. Like, I think what, what was like the craziest revert story I ever heard? I think that was, um, what was that again? It was about a person and, and you guys are going to, to think this is totally crazy, right? But there was a person that said, I'm going to accept Islam if I open up the Quran right now to a certain question I have. I will open a random page and if my question is is related in a verse on that page I open or something. And someone literally, this is actually not fantasy, this really happened. Someone actually opened the Quran and ended up on a page on uh, where the, actually the issue that person uh, had was uh, listed, right, in a verse. So this person accepted Islam just by opening randomly a Quran page and said, Yo Allah, if you exist, please show me a sign by opening the Quran, by showing me a, 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 a question or an issue that I'm having right now in my real life. And a person opened the Quran, ended up on, on, on Surah so-and-so, Ayah so-and-so was there, and it was the same problem that the person had, and then this person accepted Islam. But this is not something I personally would suggest or recommend for an individual to try to find signs to find your creator. I would rather like suggest and recommend, and this is the, the best way to actually discover the truth, is to do research, to use your logic, your brain, your common sense, a bit of your fitra, like your natural inclination towards the Tawheed, that your, 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 your heart also realizes, oh, there must be a creator because where else do we come from? And, and then maybe look at some even non-Muslim pages. Like I always recommend those that don't believe in God. Go, go on Google and type in, the NASA confirms that the universe had a start and that the universe is expanding. Type in either NASA confirms the start of the universe or NASA and universe expansion. Because the NASA themselves, and this was actually an article they posted uh, this year in February, they confirmed that the universe had a single point they have uh, noticed. And they did some research by, I think they used the, between the, the systems or the planets, the, the distance, and they measured it if it would increase over time, right? Or for example, the distance from Earth to let's say Jupiter or some other planet. And they realized, oh, the distance is increasing. So this was all a single point at, at one point in, in, in time. And the universe has a start. So for those of you that are wondering, wait a second, but if the universe has a start, where does the universe come from, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ikhlas, that he was not created by anyone, that he is infinite, that he was always there, right? So if you even read Surah Ikhlas, it's a very uh, short surah, by the way, you will realize by the description of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself, that he was like not created, he was always there and stuff, right? That, oh, that makes sense. So if there's like 
a being that's infinite, this being can set a start anytime, right? Because there's no beginning. So if the universe has a start, that means the universe is not infinite. But that what was before the universe, what is in this case Allah is infinite, just like it's described in the Quran. If you use that brain and that common sense, you will find Islam. Don't do like crazy stuff like, Oh, Allah, if you exist, I open the Quran, you give me an answer to my problem, I will worship you. Oh, Allah, I will jump into the ocean, if you save me, I become Muslim. Don't do these crazy things, okay? Use your common sense, do research, find Islam that way. And no offense to anyone that did find uh, Islam through some science or something, but I don't recommend it, okay? To show you the effort behind her decision for Allah's will to let her follow Islam, here's an example of Brother Sajid, who came across a pagan witch and told her about Islam. Oh. One thing that's special about the human being is that Allah gave us the freedom to make our own choices. Yeah. Allah tells us, and say, the truth is from your Lord, so whoever wills, let him believe, and whoever yeah, wills, let will. him disbelieve. When I was in college, I had a classmate, and she was a witch. She practiced a pagan religion called Wicca, and she loved things that were dark and gloomy and evil and spooky. So just like a goth. <laughs> and when I told her about Islam, she said that she believed that it was the truth. She believed that Prophet Muhammad must have been a prophet, that the Quran was from Allah. But she said she would rather go to the hellfire in the hereafter than to change. She said she loved the life of this world and the way that she lived too much to change. Allah tells us life those shot. are the ones who have bought the life of this world in exchange for the hereafter. So the punishment will not be lightened for them, nor will they be aided. Of course not. Brothers and sisters, May Allah protect understand. us. I Some mean. people, they knowingly choose misguidance. They choose evil over that which is good. They choose falsehood over the truth. Make sure that you make the right decision and choose the hereafter. The Let me guys give you an example. Like imagine a person came to you and offers you some, so some sort of pill. And if you swallow this pill, you will be happy for 10 years. But after 10 years, you will become more depressed than you ever, w than you ever were. And perhaps you are a, a young person. So you're like, let's say 20 years old, right? And there's this one pill that if you swallow it between the age of 20 and 30, you will be very, very happy, right? And you will have the best of life. But after 30, you're going to have the most miserable life that anyone can have on this earth. Would you choose it? So you would not choose it, right? So even if you take our human lifespan and you can trade five or 10 years of fun for 30 or 40 years of misery, you wouldn't do that because it's not logical. It's like stupid. Yeah, you're happy for 10 years, but then for another 40, 50 years, what is way longer, you're going to be the most miserable, most depressed person. Are 10 years of happiness worth like 40 years of, 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 of drama and unhappiness and this and that? They're not worth it. So if you... If you, if you even compare this with this dunya, right? And you make a comparison, you can trade five or 10 years of happiness for 30 or 40 years of misery. Nobody would do that. Or let's say someone loves a certain sin. Let's say zina, okay? Imagine someone gets the offer. You can make zina with any person you want for five years. But after five years, a certain body part is removed or something, right? And it's like some sort of spell that makes you not function after five years. Would anyone go for five years of fun to have 30 or 40 years, none of it anymore, right? So if those people that are addicted to a certain worldly pleasure, you're gonna get pleasure way greater in Jannah. And trust me, it's not worth to go for any pleasure in this dunya in exchange for a longer and greater pleasure in Jannah. It makes no sense. It's like the example a guy can do for five years let's say have the offer to do as much zina as he wants, but after five years, a part is being cut off or whatever, and it doesn't work anymore for the rest of his life. He wouldn't do this. It's stupid. This is like the same example with the pill, right? So, so what this guy says is so true. Hereafter. The witch's decision to go to hell rather than accept Islam is a clear example of the heart being blind. She knew the severity of what she had been practicing, but chose to stay on that path. It is indeed an important reminder that many disbelievers stay ignorant even after knowing the reality. And that is what ultimately costs them their hereafter. But what if someone does want to change? What if they've been involved in some dark stuff like witchcraft, but they want to leave it behind? 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Absolutely Of course the doors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness are never closed Inna Allah yakfiru dhunuba jami'a Allah forgives all sins Matter of fact, Allah is looking for those moments where you admit that you have wronged him Then you turn to him, you repent to him Acknowledging that there is a higher being But ya ibadi alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim Oh my slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Oh my slaves who have wronged themselves In other words, they have committed many sins Yes. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله. Never lose hope in the rahmah and the mercy of Allah. إن الله يكفر الذنوب جميعا. Allah forgives all sins. So, never doubt the fact that the doors of forgiveness are always open. The brother in the video sums it up beautifully. Yeah. Revealing how Allah's doors of forgiveness are always open for those who sincerely repent for their sins and realize their mistakes. Yes. He emphasizes. How it is never too late for you to restart your life in the way of Allah. Allahu Akbar. Yeah, but that is true. I mean, there are some conditions of Tawbah, like you need to really regret, right? And not be like, ha ha ha, I committed a sin, I enjoyed it, I would do it again, but hey, I'm sorry. No, that's not the right way to repent, right? So, so, so what he said at the end is important. Yes, you need to feel some, some sort of guilt, no matter how high the level of guilt is, but there should be at least a bit of guilt in it, right? And the higher the guilt, of course, the more sincere the Tawbah is, right? But, yeah, like, this is crazy. From witchcraft to Islam, right? We had a black magician even <laughs> before from black magic to Islam. But actually black magic and witchcraft is pretty much the same, I would say, right? Because in both cases, you call on the jinn to help or do something, right? Like any form of black magic goes back to the jinn. This is how it is, right? But that is a beautiful story. May Allah keep this um, sister steadfast and stable on the deen. I mean... And yeah, this is interesting. I actually really love and enjoy checking out those conversion, those those revert stories. Because I'm a revert myself, so it's actually fascinating for me to hear how did somebody else find to Islam and this and that, right? So that was really fun to check out. Let me give this one actually a thumbs up. And yeah, if you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. And I will see you guys next time, inshallah.